Hi there, I'm Thack. Welcome to Thack Ironworks. I am preparing later this week to go on a little motorcycle trip. Uh, I'm going to get on my bike and ride to Quebec and go to heavy Montreal and see the mighty Slayer. And that got me thinking about my Slayer suit, which just came back from a rental about a week ago. And it's a little worse for wear. I made this suit 18 years ago, something like that. Um, just under 20 years ago and it's been used quite a bit and straps have been replaced here and there but it came back from the last rental pretty beat up pauldrons falling a lot of straps totally missing that they had to lace together and it's just a little bit tired it's got rust and stuff like that so i thought it's earned it it's time for it to get a little bit of a refurbishing some tender loving care so we're gonna take the straps off i've got some leather here we're gonna cut up some more straps dye that and then just get back into this thing and give it a, an overhaul and let's see what comes up so stick around okay so i now have the first piece disassembled so i think i'm going to do this a little bit forensically in that i've already got lengths figured out for straps and stuff like that so rather than tear the whole thing apart and then just uh, have to start piecing it together i'm going to start working on the straps for this pauldron and then move on to the next one so we're going to do it kind of piecework like that i'm going to pull in my young assistant here to help me with some of this because we've got quite a bit of ground to cover so we're going to get started as i'm going through this process i'm fixing uh, little things that happened during the actual making of this. So back many years ago when I actually sculpted this, I actually split, cracked apart there, tore it out. So I've now, as I'm going along, I'm just kind of welding that up. So I've welded that seam there, now we just have to grind it out. And I'm also noticing that I didn't do a really great job grinding my standards were different back then. So I'm gonna uh, grind these areas much smoother and give it a little bit more clearance. I think it'll allow the function of the pauldron to work much better. So I'm gonna, I've got some strap leather here. I don't ask me what the ounces are. I can never remember ounces with leather and stuff like that. Uh, all I know is I've got my strap cutter set at three quarter of an inch wide and that's what I typically make my straps. It just seems to be a good general width for this thickness of leather. So, <clears throat> It's just a razor with a guide here and basically just get it in and you can slice off a bunch of nice consistent straps. So we're well into the process now. We've got the pauldron is now rough together again. So I've riveted up these portions here but the actual center point of the pauldron is still uh, just bolt it together so that I can disassemble that and then we can do the final touch up on things. So that is coming along. Let's get that apart so you can see what I mean here. So these pieces are still separate. We're going to do the finish on that before. As I was going through this, I realized I never put grommets in the pauldron holes. So these holes here which were just drilled out, which is really quite hard on the leather lacing that holds these in place. So no wonder I went through so many lacing on the gambeson over the years. So right now I'm putting some grommets in there. In the background here, Ethan is dyeing the straps. So we've got black leather dye and he's just running them through the dye there um, so that the straps are black. Um, I'm gonna now demonstrate the grommets. The grommet is two pieces of brass and they start out shiny. Ah, me no like shiny brass. I like things antique, especially for this suit, everything is antique. So I've soaked this in gun blue for a little bit just to get that brownish, bluish patina on it. So now I'm going to put the grommet in place. I've got my bottom die here. Set the grommet into that. And then the piece, and then the washer piece, I call it. Find my top die here, and basically, Give that a few swats to tighten it down. And there we have it. So now we've got a grommet on there. This grommet will be a little bit more friendly for the leather lacing that will be going through there.
We are in the midst of strapping, so right now I am punching holes to put new buckles on new straps. So I went ahead and did one here, and I'm gonna use it as my guide for placing the holes. And I just wanna demonstrate this. So I'm using these hollow punches, and I'm just lining it up with the one I've already determined that works. And when I'm doing this, oftentimes I will just use the punch itself and just push down and see what the depression is because um, you can be offside quite easily and not have it centered. So if you do that, that gives you a chance to move it over and it's easier than trying to mark it with a pencil and just use the impression itself. So now I'm going to move to a slot punch here and same thing, just push it down. This thing is really tricky to try to get it lined up. so. That's where you really need to kind of check it and make sure that you're not going off on an angle. Back plate down. Don't worry about it. No harm done. It's a good thing I make armor and not, uh, I don't know, teacups. So there we go. That will then bend around and when we put a buckle on it, Put the leather through there like that, and I will then take a rivet, I'm gonna use a truss head rivet on this here, and a washer, and just push down with my thumb on the washer here, and I'm gonna try to start upsetting the rivet to kind of capture that washer, and once I've got it in place, I can use the ball peen and just skate it across here. That is the buckle in place there and ready to go. So we have a pile of straps here and the way we do this typically is just do it on the end of all the, or the various straps, however many we need. In this case, I've done a count and it looks like we need 14 buckles. So oh, we're gonna actually have seven straps here. So what we're gonna do is just square off the ends, use this one in a guy, as a guide here and continue on and so on until we have 14 buckles and I'm gonna hand this off to Ethan now. So we'll put him over here in the corner and he can get started on that while I move into some other stuff. So here's the helmet. Uh, the helmet out of all the pieces has more rust. Uh, probably was outside at some point and got some weather on it. Um, I actually kind of like the effect of this. It's got a very uh, rough and rugged battle scarred sort of effect. But because we're doing an overhaul here, I think we're gonna just redo the finish up pretty much everything here. And without stripping it down and, and going right down to base metal, what I'm gonna do is just use stove polish paste is what it's called. Uh, also called lamp black or stove black. And essentially what this is, it was designed for a stove pipe. When your wood stove pipe gets rusty, you can just put this stuff on and it's, uh, I think it's got soot in it and then other oils and stuff like that and basically, you notice I just put it over the rust and the rust actually gives it some traction and uh, it sticks onto the rust quite nicely. And then I can just rub the whole thing down like that and make everything look new. So this bit of a process, a lot of elbow grease to get this all in place. Okay, so you can see the difference as I'm doing that. And I just wanna show you my next step one, once I have all this blackened out, then I'm gonna come in and using a die grinder with a Scotch-Brite product. Um, this is the blue disc, which is their fine one. I'm just gonna polish out the highlights on it, and I'll just show you quickly what sort of effect that should be. capture that but you see just hitting the highlights on there just kind of pops up the contrast on it and makes for a very dramatic finish so that is where we are going we've got a lot of surface area to cover here so this is going to take a little bit just doing the last of the straps here typically I go back inch and a half from the point of the strap which I've just cut roughly by hand I'm going for a pretty crude look on this overall effect for this suit that's kind of the aesthetic that I want my space for holes in straps like this is typically three quarter of an inch. So I just lay out the ruler and then using the punch itself, I just 
lightly press it in and then make sure they're centered off. When I snip off my corners for things like this, you are left with raw leather showing there. So typically what I do is just take a Sharpie and color it in. That is a little tip from the whole costuming industry. Never be without a Sharpie. I'm using truss head rivets here with the truss head on the inside because it needs to slide over another plate of steel. So rather than have it closed on the inside, which has more of a hump, I do that and then I put a dark washer on the outside here and paint it over. Which I like this effect, it's got a nice textured rivet head then when it's done. And on the inside, it is very low profile so that it can slide over a piece of steel, which is very important in this case. There we have it. Now, I have to put in the male portion of the buckle there so usually when I'm doing that I go I typically put four holes in um, for most strap configurations and I go to the third hole and then I am going to grab the upper cannon of the arm to make sure that I've got enough to get that around it's got to be able to encompass that and I'm going to do that on the third there and then come over here and make a mark where that is going in there. So now I know what my length is on that. I can pull that off of there, punch a hole, and then attach that strap. Ta-da! So here we are. Everything is all refinished now and Slayer is looking just fantastic. I um, mean, going through this, it was, it was a bit of a walk down memory lane for me because basically this suit is a mishmash of experimental pieces that I made early on in my career. This helmet, for example, I made this when I was 19, so I was still a teenager when I actually made this. So it's going back into prehistory of fact, really early stuff there. And then this breastplate, I remember I made that in my early 20s. It was, it was one of my earlier muscular breastplates and I was still working on developing that uh, design or how the aesthetic of that all worked together. And then I just slowly started adding pieces. The greaves here, they were, I remember I was just experimenting with sculpting faces and decided to make them into greaves. And it was around that point that I decided I was gonna take all these various bits and pieces of experiments and make it into one suit. And that, at that point, then I started, um, I added the skirt and the back plate, and then I started adding arms, gauntlets. Uh, and around this time when I did the arms and the gauntlets, I was starting to do a lot of Lord of the Rings replica stuff, the Witch King gauntlets and, and arm armor and stuff like that. So basically this was experimentation of that type of design. And then of course just skulls, because I like them and uh, you know, it was always, trying to experiment with that. So as it came together, it just kind of gelled into this suit, which because of the way it came together, it's not the most comfortable thing to wear. Ergonomically, things don't move very well. They're just basically a lot of mismatched pieces that I've tried to blend together, but it um, doesn't flow as well. It really is kind of my early work and I, I've learned a lot, especially things like gauntlets and, and arms how things ergonomically move. But on the whole, I, you, got, you, got to, you can't deny it's a pretty cool looking suit. The effect is pretty awesome. Um, and I remember late in the process of putting it together, I think I was listening to Slayer at that point and I was thinking I should name this suit and Slayer being one of my favorite bands, it, the name just seemed to resonate. It seemed like it's kind of the right attitude for, for what this suit is. So I named it Slayer and uh, the rest is history. I've had this suit now for probably, I think it's about 18 years and um, I'm glad I've got it refurbished again. It was a little bit tired and it needed some love. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Um, and I am gonna call it done here. I'm on my way to Montreal now to see 